now we can drill down into everything as to how we uncovered um, in those early days, the move at transfer CVE and exploit and attack chain. Uh, but forgive me, I'm rambling, Caleb. I'll let you take the stage. No problem. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we kind of wanted to talk through what does this look like from a process perspective? What are we thinking? How are we looking for these different vulnerabilities and how does uh, being, how does replicating them work from our perspective? Um, so one of the best first places to start is the actual announcement of the vulnerability. So this is directly from Progress's website um, where we can get version numbers, where we can get download links and documentation and things like that. So that's obviously the first place we're going to want to start. Um, so we, our first step was trying to get these specific move it versions, uh, specifically the unpatched version as well as the patched version if we could um, ideally have them both installed or easy to switch between so that we can look at these and figure out what the differences are and, and maybe try and replicate this this exploit um, on the next slide we kind of see uh, we had seen some exploitation and also there were some logs floating around the internet so we kind of want to use this as a map of where we want to go Assuming we were able to download all that software and get all the move it transfer software set up on VMs, um, now we have this log entry from a compromised host. It doesn't tell us a lot. It doesn't tell us what happened. It doesn't tell us how it happened. But it kind of tells us maybe where to go. Um, and it might give us kind of some clues on where the vulnerability could be. Um, so some things that we were looking at in this file specifically is we were kind of obviously trying to find the beginning of an attack. We know that uh, a file ended up in the web root. So at the time when we first started looking at this, we saw this uh, posting to a files endpoint under API. We saw retrieving lists of files and getting tokens. And we're like, okay, that sounds like maybe they're uploading. They figured out a way to upload a file outside of the, the intended directory. That's what we thought at the time. Um, so we thought, okay, that's probably the beginning of the attack that was in our minds at the time. But then we also saw some weird things like we saw this move it IS API DLL and we saw this guest access requests um, and this machine too, which interestingly is coming from local host. So uh, that is basically all the information we had initially. Um, we also didn't have uh, directly adjacent version numbers initially. We had like kind of disparate version numbers where we had like the, the absolute newest version and we had an older one. Um, so doing direct kind of comparison of the binaries wasn't easy or necessarily incredibly helpful uh, initially. Um, but we just kind of started looking, I guess is the best way to put that. Um, what we did is we used a combination of kind of dot peak and Ghidra, um, to start looking at these things and I'll share my screen in a second. And I think we'll go through some of this, but I, but just to get a high level overview, um, move it is written in, uh, I, I haven't seen their root source code, but it is dot net. And what I assume is C sharp, uh, on their end. So we can use .peak, which is a super useful uh, application on Windows from JetBrains to decompile the, DL the .NET DLLs and be able to see that in C Sharp and be able to read through it. Um, the ISAPI DLL that we saw in the logs previously is actually in C++ or C uh, in some compiled language. So we can look at that in Ghidra uh, for decompilation or IDA if you have a license or Hopper or... R2, pick your poison there. But uh, personally, I was using Ghidra. Uh, so we wanted to open those things up and try and figure out what was going on. 